Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Keely Van Middendorp. We begin tonight north of Great Falls where emergency crews continue to work after a wildfire ignited, ignited off of Bootlegger Trail. MTN Zach Shermley joins us live from the scene. And Zach, it was a very active wildfire earlier, but firefighters seem to have that situation under control now. Go ahead. That's right, Keely. We are standing here live right now uh, outside this fire, which crews are telling us are currently in the mop up phase. That fire starting at around uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, it ignited at 123 Lake Flat Lane uh, here outside Bootlegger Trail. Uh, people telling MTN News that the fire went through some coolies here, as well as coming up to some of the homes outside uh, Bootlegger Trail uh, out here. Some of the responding agencies to that fire, including, as well as volunteer fire, fire departments, including uh, Black Eagle, Ulm, San Cooley, uh, Ulm Fire Department, actually, and Malmstrom Air Force Base. Uh, like I said, we are in the mop-up phase right now. Some of those responders include uh, requesting, rather, for water tenders as well as brush trucks in the response to the fire. Now, as always, we are going to keep you updated on air and online about this developing story. Uh, but for now, I'm Zach Shermley, MTN News, reporting live outside Great Falls. Back to you, Keeley, in the studio. Thanks, Zach. And our Storm Tracker weather team is here to tell us how dry it is outside. Grant Garland joins us now. Grant, fire danger certainly remains a concern throughout the day. Definitely, especially when you're looking at single digits on how dry we are. I mean, take a look out here in Great Falls, 9%. That is the lowest that I've seen it so far. 8% in Cut Bank, 11% in Helena, and 13% in Lewistown. So very dry. You mix that in, and with our temperatures too, I mean, it's 94 degrees. You got the hot temperatures, low relative humidity. That's going to increase our fire concern. 94 in Helena, 89 in Lewistown, and 95 outside right now in Jordan. So let's do that. Now let's take a look at our winds too. seven miles an hour. So at least we aren't seeing uh, two windy conditions that could help blow that fire. And I know uh, Zach was saying that they are in the mop up stage right now. We are looking at a few clouds starting to roll into the electric city and uh, and down towards Helena as well. As far as tonight's concerned, we are looking at temperatures around 61 in Great Falls, 62 in Helena and 55 in Haver. Heads up tomorrow. We are looking at a very hot day. We're going to be seeing a heated advisory start at around noon tomorrow. That's because temperatures are going to be in the upper 90s and low 100s, but there is a possible cool down on the way and we're going to talk about that and when it's going to be here. But for now, back to you. Thanks, Grant. Well, Montana DPHHS is reporting 92 new cases of COVID-19 here in the state of Montana for today. That brings our total active case total to over 1,500 cases. Cascade County sitting at 45 cases and Lewis and Clark County with 65 cases tonight. And families struggling with the loss and grief from COVID-19 can get support from the American Red Cross. The Red Cross began a virtual family assistance center with mental health, spiritual care and health services services volunteers. One Helena volunteer is part of this network. MTN's Alexia Guayo has the story. Abby Calusi is a disaster mental health lead volunteer for Red Cross. Although she has been volunteering for three years, Abby served a two-month term virtually this year, something she says is not typical in her line of work. Again, being a mental health volunteer, we're always there. We're always used to being in person with individuals, being able to hug them and being able to console them or put our hand on their shoulder. We weren't able, obviously, to do that. Because of the pandemic, the Red Cross has stopped deployments. However, the same services are provided, but over the phone through the Virtual Family Assistance Center that Abby says began in May. So it's a national database, so then the, the phone call just gets forwarded to your cell phone, and then you kind of take some background information, intake information from them, seeing what their, their support is, uh, what they need. You know, virtual is some kind of... Uh, connection to local resources or if they did lose a family member can they do they know how to have a memorial service or funeral service uh, not really being able to gather with other individuals and if needed Abby also says she would follow up with individuals to see how they were doing overall Abby feels grateful to help others in the pandemic but then definitely hearing the stories you know of people living in their cars because they have lost their job or their you know, uh, place of residence, you know, due to the uh, disease. I'm very thankful for that I haven't been impacted, but yet I'm able to be able to give back 
to people who have been affected. Anyone suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic is encouraged to contact the Red Cross Virtual Family Assistance Center for help. In Helena, I'm Lexi Guayo, MTM News. Thanks, Alexi. And in news around the state tonight, state judges presiding over Montana's drug treatment courts say they're a much better route than throwing addicts in prison. But late last week, treatment court officials told U.S. Senator Steve Daines that they could use more resources for more courts and that the pandemic isn't helping either. Members of Helena's drug treatment court uh, team met up with Senator Daines on Friday to talk about successes and struggles to drug court treatment graduates Don Knowles and Joe Wool. Woolers said that the program has helped them recover after years of addiction and family trauma. Dane said he's a big proponent of treatment courts, which sometimes can be funded by federal money. Helena Treatment Court Judge James Reynolds said another 80 families in Helena could benefit from the courts and that they should certainly be expanded. He also said the pandemic has made it harder by restricting how much he can interact with treatment court participants face to face. I got I gotta look at them. I gotta, they gotta look at me, I gotta look at them, and we gotta talk about what's going on. I'm not sitting up here waiting for you to screw up so I can throw the book at you, you know. We all take those hats off, put on these other hats, and we're trying, we're working as a team to give you the best chance to be a success in your life. Listening to the results of these treatment courts uh, tells a very compelling story. This is something we should continue to invest in. Uh, Men and women who were on paths of addiction and headed towards prison go through the treatment court process and they come out as productive members of society by holding them accountable. And state judges like Reynolds must run the treatment court but yet still manage a full docket of other cases, both civil and criminal. A Bozeman church gets creative and finds a way to allow worshipers to continue to meet while being safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Gabby Crevett and I'll have that story coming up. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. And welcome back. Well, tonight at 10, a brand new episode of Montana Cares airs with MTN's Matt Alzaffle. Chase Your Dreams Virtual Reality opened their doors back in February of this year, but had to close them just a month later due to the coronavirus pandemic. While they were closed, funds from the Cares Act helped them pay the bills without customers coming in. Owner Chase Morgan says the downtime was tough, but things are looking up. We couldn't really do anything. It was, it was really tough, but then they started reopening, allowing us to take private bookings, which is what we're doing right now. So you can book online and then come in down. And we've just started slowing, slowly opening back up since then, and we're now ready to take people in again. And again, we'll have the full story of Chase's journey through the pandemic tonight at 10. Well, many people are attending church via Zoom during the COVID-19 pandemic, but some churches are looking for creative ways to congregate in person. MTN's Gabby Crevett has a story of one Bozeman church that's been meeting regularly, but at a healthy social distance. For the Hope Lutheran Church in Bozeman, it's all about keeping that strong sense of community while keeping each other safe during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is why they had the idea to start hosting drive through church services. Hi. Hi. Would you like two bulletins? You bet, just one is fine. The drive-in model is making a major comeback in 2020 and is being adopted by a church in Bozeman. I mean, people arrive for worship and they're met by an usher who gives them a bulletin, which has pretty much the text of the service for the day. And then they're just told to come park basically in any stall that doesn't have a cone. Churchgoers receive a pre-sealed communion set that includes a wafer and grape juice and are told to tune into the FM station broadcasting oh, the sermon. And to depart from evil. Pastor Stephen Schmidt says it's tough enough not congregating inside together, but this is a great alternative for those wanting to connect offline and in person. Well, I guess we honestly believe that the situation isn't safe enough yet for us to return to inside worship as much as we want to do that. Yeah, we still are, we're able to sing out loud together and without endangering anyone. Kathy Weaver has been attending Hope Lutheran Church for over 20 years. I wasn't sure ex what to expect when we first started doing it, but I've been pleasantly surprised. I really like to be able to see everybody, even if they're just a little ways away, but to, to know that they're here. To walk these days by yourself is really difficult. We're not created to be individuals locked away in our homes. In Bozeman, Gabby Crevett, MTN News. 
Temperatures tonight in the low 60s for the electric and capital cities. But what about tomorrow? We'll stay tuned to my full forecast coming up. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Grant Garland. Welcome back everyone. I hope that you have had a fantastic Sunday so far, even though it's been blistering hot. I mean, take a look right now. Uh, we've seen 94 degree temperatures in Great Falls, 95 in Helena, 93 in Billings and 91 in Lewistown. It will be interesting to see what Glasgow and Jordan has seen once those finally uh, once those numbers finally come in. 95 degrees though in Haver. Now the average temperature that we see is around 83 degrees for the electric city. So yeah, very, very hot. The record set back though in 2013 when it was 101 degrees. Also the year that frozen came out quite the difference that we're seeing right now with that uh, title of the movie. Great Falls, uh, we're seeing starting to see clouds roll in for the electric and the capital cities. Down towards Lewistown, though, still looking at blue skies and out towards Hayes looking at uh, blue skies, too. We are looking at 94 degrees in both Great Falls, Helena, Havener, uh, excuse me, Haver, uh, Helena, Havener, oh well. Uh, 92 in Cut Bank, 95 in Jordan, and 89 in Lewistown. So very hot temperatures across the board for the Treasure State. And our temperatures really aren't helping us either feel that cool down. Seven in Great Falls, eight in uh, Helena, and 10 in cut bank. So how dry are we actually? Well, when you mix all these variables together, we're seeing 9% uh, relative humidity. Very, very dry. 11 in Helena, 13 in Lewistown, 12 in Haver, 15 in Glasgow. So whenever you have these variables, well, you're going to see that increased chance in fire. And uh, that's what we're looking at. We're still waiting for the official report on how that fire started, though, uh, around Great Falls. That started around after 1 o'clock this uh, afternoon. Clouds, though, they are starting to roll into the area. Don't mind the green uh, that specs that you're seeing. Those are dealing with bugs and probably birds. We aren't looking at, though, any precipitation at the moment. Tomorrow, as we go throughout the day, we will see an elevated fire risk right around 5 p.m. for many folks in the Treasure State that uh, even by around uh, close to midnight, we're still going to see a few areas around Haver as well as Billings that are looking at that threat for elevated uh, fire risk. But what are we looking at in terms of the driest time tomorrow? Well, that's going to be right around uh, 3 o'clock and we're seeing 14% humidity, 97 degree temperatures. The only saving grace is that wind speed that we aren't going to be really looking at that wind gust. For our friends in Helena, we're going to be looking at the driest time to be right around the uh, 630 mark at 15% too. Now our winds are going to kind of be gusting close to the orange for a moderate risk. As far as what we're expecting, well, we are in the at least uh, Great Falls area, 20 to 30 mile per hour winds right around 1230 tomorrow, 10 to 20 in Helena. Why are we seeing the weather that we are? Well, it's because of this high pressure that still remains in control. It will allow for that warm air to rise into the state. By uh, Tuesday morning, though, notice a couple of showers that will try to creep in. That will help bring some moisture back to us, which will be really nice, but we just got to get there first. I mean, temperatures tomorrow, 98 degrees, 95 on Tuesday. Very, very hot. So heads up, we are expecting a cool down late Sunday. 62 in Helena tonight, 61 in Great Falls, and uh, around uh, 65 in Haver. 100 degrees, though, tomorrow in Haver, and 98 degrees in Great Falls, 103 in Jordan, 101 in Glasgow. Heading throughout the next couple of days, 95 degrees on Tuesday. Introduce a chance for an isolated uh, severe, th for an isolated storm, rather, and also for our friends in Helena, we're going to be looking at temperatures staying, again, around 98 degrees tomorrow 94 on Tuesday just a very very warm day all in all. Thanks Grant still to come the latest news around what many are calling the fight to save the U.S. Postal Service. From Montana's news leader you're watching the MTN 530 News. And welcome back to the 530 News. With the coronavirus expected to prompt millions to vote by mail in the November election, the U.S. Postal Service is at the center of a growing political storm. CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen has the story from New York. The U.S. Postal Service is a fundamental part of our democracy, and it's not a service that should be taken away. Protesters turned up outside the Washington, D.C. home of U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy this weekend, some calling for him to step down. On Saturday, President Trump was asked if his recently handpicked Postmaster General is hampering the service to discourage mail-in voting. No, not at all. The steps that he's taking are trying to stop 
the tremendous losses that have taken place for many, many years. He's trying to streamline the post office and make it great again, okay? DeJoy has said he overhauled the post office to fix its dire financial situation, but its internal watchdog is investigating. Democrats accuse the Trump campaign donor of working with the president to undermine mail-in voting with moves like eliminating overtime. The problem with the mail-in voting, number one, you're never going to know when the election's over. President Trump insists mail-in ballots are vulnerable to fraud, which research has shown to be rare. CBS News has learned the Postal Service sent letters to all 50 states and the District of Columbia warning their deadlines for accepting mail-in ballots may result in thousands not being counted. This is more about states trying to recreate how they get their, their ballots, and they do, they're trying to do it on a compressed timeline that just won't work. Democrats want DeJoy and the chairman of the Postal Service Board of Governors to testify on Capitol Hill. And if Mr. DeJoy refuses to appear, he should be stamped return to sender. As Election Day draws closer, CBS News has confirmed House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other Democratic leaders are considering an early return from August recess to address the Postal Service crisis. Tom Hansen, CBS News. In a statement today, the Postal Service told CBS News it would postpone removing mailboxes in low-density areas for 90 days, but the timing was not clear. Stick around. We'll be right back. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. And welcome back. Well, a positive story to end our night. A 107-year-old woman is celebrating life after living through not one, but two pandemics. Here's more. Even through her mask, you can see the amazement on Darlene Jasmine's face, watching her grandmother dance the tango at 107 years old. Oh, I can't even put it into words. Especially because in May, she got a call from Brighton Gardens in Middletown, saying her grandmother had tested positive for coronavirus. I thought, you know, uh, this just might be the thing that's going to take her down this time. But the staff here says Anna Del Piori was a fighter. She came down with a fever and cough, but eventually recovered from the virus. Everyone was just amazed that she's a dual survivor of two pandemics. The Brooklyn native not only beat COVID-19, she also survived the Spanish flu in 1918 when she was six years old. How did you do it? God. God help me. She's strong. I don't know, I've got good friends. I'm healthy. She also credits at least some of her immunity and longevity to a lifelong Mediterranean diet. Yeah, I eat hot peppers. <laughs> <laughs> While she was sick, Anna was able to FaceTime with her granddaughter, so Darlene always had the peace of mind that she was doing okay. Now they're able to do socially distant visits outside here at the facility. The one thing they haven't been able to do yet is give each other a hug. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Maybe it'll happen on Anna's 108th birthday in September. <laughs> Until then, she'll keep blowing kisses. And we're honored and blessed to be a part of her journey. There you go. A journey that will continue to be filled with counting blessings. Oh, you're going to go down, though. And lots of dancing. In Middletown, New Jersey, Jessica Layton, CBS 2 News. That is such a great story. Well, we are looking at a heat advisory in place starting tomorrow at noon and lasting through Tuesday at 9 p.m. That's due to temperatures that are going to be able to soar up to around 100 degrees in Haver, 101 in Glasgow, 103 in Jordan, 98 in Great Falls, and 98 in Helena. But let's do a quick recap of what we're expecting tonight. Temperatures falling down to around 61 degrees in Great Falls. 62 in Helena, 58 in Lewistown, and 60 in Jordan. Now, as we head throughout the next seven days, just get ready for our temperatures to stay above the average for this time of year. We're going to be looking at, uh, well, our, our average is around 83 degrees, so, you know, let numbers just do the justice for you. Thursday, looking at a 30% chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms. We will start to see cooler temperatures, though, on the way on Sunday, so I'm really excited about that. And for our friends in Helena, we are going to be looking at 98 degrees again tomorrow, mostly sunny and hot. Then we're going to start introducing the chances for isolated storms on Tuesday before becoming scattered Wednesday and Thursday, and that will also increase our fire concerns because of the uh, cloud to ground lightning. So we'll have to make sure that we are staying weather aware for that. And then temperatures uh, steadily drop down, <laughs> put that in quotations, drop down to around 89 degrees on Sunday. 
eight. I still haven't seen your Hawaiian shirt yet, Grant. Oh, these temperatures, okay. we expect you to whip that out anytime. All right. Yeah. You know I want to see it in your grass skirt, too. My grass skirt with Either my or, dancing or spoons both. to do yeah. a chant to totally try. <laughs> People yes. are going to think that I'm into I like that. it. No. Uh, <laughs> but also it's cowbell. <laughs> Always cowbell. more cowbell. Yeah. All right. That's I'll all the that. time we have tonight at 530. We'll see you right back here at 10. Be safe.